in this video, we're going to be taking a look at this awesome Python library that will allow you to perform statistical analysis. And as you can see here, it is feature rich and yet very simple to use. And so let's get started. So you can see here that this particular Python library allows you to do a long list of statistical analysis. And actually these are only some examples of what it can do. And so for a complete list, we have to take a look at the API. And so this Python library is called Penguin. And so it is mentioned here that the Penguin Python library, when compared to the t-test function of SciPy, the Penguin's version of t-test provides more detail. And so you can see that the SciPy version provides the t-value and the p-value while the Penguin version provides t-value, p-value, and in addition, it also provides the degree of freedom, the effect size, the 95% confidence interval of the mean difference, statistical power, and also the base factor of the test. And so why don't we get started and install Penguin on a Google Colab. So let's install it, pip install Penguin. All right, and installed already. So actually I've just installed this a few seconds ago. And so that's why it is returning very quickly. And so let's try one of the t-test calculation here. And so on the website of Penguin, which you could easily click on this link. And so this particular Jupyter Notebook will be shared in the video description. And also I provide the links to this as well in the video description. And so let's try it on Google Colab. And so let's do the t-test. So first thing is to import NumPy as NP, import Penguin as PG, and then we will assign a random seed number in order to allow it to be reproducible. Actually, we just copy and paste the rest. And so there you go, it is returned here. And so let's say that if we wanna put it into a t-test df, because it looks like a data frame. Let's do that. All right, so it is a data frame. And so let's write it out as a CSV file, t-test-df.2 CSV, and then we'll call it t-test.csv. Let's have a look. There you go, let's double click on it. And here it is. So it is conveniently printed out and then we save it as a CSV file. So it is a pandas data frame. And let's try another one. Let's try the Pearson's correlation one. So why don't I make this into a test, t-test, Pearson's correlation. And we just need to use pg.core function, correlation function, x and y as the input arguments. And there you go. And then we could assign it to a data frame Let's call it C-O-R-R underscore D-F. And we could also print it out to CSV. We could call it correlation.csv. And then we just return it so that we could see it. There you go. And how about, let's have a look at the QQ plot here. QQ plot, and then just copy it. All right, so you could easily generate this QQ plot and you could calculate ANOVA, even perform multiple linear regression. Let's try that. Multiple linear regression. Let's call it MLR. Data is not defined. Okay, let's see what's the data here. All right, so we'll use it here. X, Y, Z. Try adding this. That will only calculate the pairwise. Hmm. So, hmm. We have X here. But where did Y come from? Z is here. Let's see, I have to find Y because I didn't run all of it. Okay, I think I found one. Okay, we had Y already. X, Y. Oh, but it's for the t test example. Let me search for Y. This one is it? Yeah. And then this one. Oh, okay, maybe it works. Let's try. Okay, it works now. Let's put that here. Let's reuse the chunk of code here and let's put it here. There you go. So why don't we try it out with the Boston data set? So we'll 
this is an example on some artificial data. And let's do this on the Boston, right? Boston Housing data set. Let's make it bold. All right, there you go. And now we can see the coefficients, the regression coefficients of all of the independent variables and the intercept value as well. All right, and here we go. The R squared value, the adjusted R squared value. All right, so let's continue. And let's have a look at this feature here. So, it's, so it is saying that Penguin is integrated with Panda's data frame. And so you could add a function after the data frame itself. But then apparently here, they're reading in a data set from the Penguin's library. So I would imagine that if we apply the functions here on a Panda's data frame, I think it would work. Let's see, let's improvise here. Integration with pandas. Oops. And let's see, we have our xy. It's not yet a panda state of frame here. Load Boston. Okay, and so let's create our own. Let's call this Boston. Now let's create a data frame. So PD data frame. So we'll have Boston.data columns equals Austin dot feature names. Let's see. All right, so now we have all of the X variables here and let's integrate the Y value. I mean the Y variable here and it's met V, I guess. Let's call it met V equals series Austin dot target. Let's have a look again. Now the y value, I mean the y variable is here, met v, the median price of the house, and now it is a data frame. And let me apply the pairwise correlations, df dot pairwise columns equals, and then we probably have to specify the columns that we want to compute the. So before doing that, let me try um, columns crim and Z N and in this comma oh, nice. and then and V. All right, there you go. Very nice. Okay, so it's computing in all possible pairs for the three. Let's try it on partial correlation matrix. All right, so that was quite easy. So here we have the intercorrelation matrix between each of the variables with one another and the correlation with itself will have a value of one. All right, so it works with the Panda state of frame. And if you're using this in a scientific paper, then you're recommended to cite Penguin by citing this article. So you can see here that it's quite intuitive and you could go along by having a look at the example and then improvising in your own projects. But also you could check out the API as well. Click on the API documentation. And then for all of the statistical analysis, you could click on the particular function that you want to use and then have a look at each of the input argument and what are the options available for you. And it provides you quite a detailed explanation. And it's good that they also provide some relevant information and also references for you to have a look and also some more examples for you to try. Let's go back. Okay, so there is a lot of statistical analysis functions available here and lots of plots as well. Let's have a look at this guidelines. So in performing statistical analysis, this particular guideline comes in handy because it provides you with a schematic diagram that helps you to select the appropriate analysis for each of the given situation. So they provide you with this decision diagram, whether you're using between or within subject design or both. And so it will pinpoint you into determining whether it has equal variances and if it does or if it doesn't, which approach should you use in all of the following functions here. And then they provide you some example code. And then this is for correlation. And then this is for non-parametric analysis. And so these come in handy. So I'll provide you the link to this particular page. 
And so if you're finding value in this video, please support the channel by smashing the like button, subscribing if you haven't already, and also make sure to hit on the notification bell so that you will be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.